What is happening, Magnesites? Everyone hates the acolyte that Ron made to play at the game. Bars! And that's a good thing. It is a good thing to have bars. Rest in peace, Star Wars. All kind of rhyme with bars and anything. Anyway, so let's see what the man Nerd Roddick has to say. Well, he's got some juicy details for us. You were the chosen one! You know, it's hard for people to realize, and I'm not supposed to say this, and I wasn't supposed to say it then, but, you know. You were said that you would destroy this, and not join them! Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> The lack of success of the female-centric Ahsoka in 2023, mm -hmm. Disney Star Wars decided to start 2024 with this. And we're in 2024 now, and I think uh, it's about time that we had a woman uh, come forward uh, to shape the story in a galaxy <laughs> far, far away. Well, here we go again. Yeah, now. That was the director of the much unanticipated Ray film, Charmaine Obey. <laughs> I almost forgot about this. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Chinoy, when 2024 was just hours old, never mind the fact that she is not the first woman to shape Star Wars, no. and certainly not the first activist woman to shape Star no. Wars. My body of work over the last 20 years has been um, guided by my activism, and every single piece of work that I've ever created has a piece of activism in it. Mm. It could be very overt, or it could be covert, but it is there. Oh boy. That is why you fail. But not to worry, mm. Debbie Downer, because Lucasfilm has figured it out. They've cracked the code. They've pounded the analytics. And they're going to turn <laughs> things around by shaping Star Wars with a female activist showrunner who also happens to be the former personal assistant of Harvey Weinstein. There I go, getting all negative again. Like I said, this one's going to be completely different. It's going to be female-centric with diversity and inclusion. That's right, the long-awaited, much-anticipated Acolyte trailer dropped a couple of days ago, described by Judas Cow, I'm sorry, showrunner Leslie Hedlund as... And the funny thing about it is, you know, when I saw the trailer, it looked high quality. You know, if you were to teleport me from 1995 to now and just show me this, I'm like, oh, hmm, looks good. Looks interesting. However, if you've read about all the details and what's going on, and you understand what's going on politically, and just with all of this activism, you know what's coming. And that's the reason why it's got so many downvotes. Everybody knows what's coming. And let me tell you something. I would be literally shocked in shock if this is a good series, if it does well, both of them, we shall see. Um, hey, so far with two episodes, they've done well with, uh, with the X-Men. So we'll see. Is that a fluke? The series isn't done yet. We shall see. But so far, it's been great. Frozen meets Kill Bill. I'm, I'm yeah, curious no what sense. that means. Can we elaborate? Yeah. Are we getting a musical? You're not getting yeah, a musical. Because musical? Okay, that was Kathy's first question when I pitched it to her. She was like, so a musical with a snowman? I was like, I was like no, 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 no. no. Can you stamp it or something? So much of it was about, you know, the kind of villainess actually be a powerful, misunderstood woman. It was hitting me on such a deep level and yet servicing the genre. I mean, why not Will and Grace meets Robocop? Or Modern <laughs> Family meets Saw? Or Sesame Street meets Scared Straight. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy to suggest that Disney might want to try Star Wars meets Star Wars, yeah. but we know they yeah. can't do that. I digress. Anyway, with the Acolyte trailer, Disney Star Wars has managed to do the unthinkable, the unimaginable. They brought us all together again, just not in the way they intended, because aside from a few <laughs> clapping seals, everyone hates it. As far as I know, this is the first Disney Star Wars project to be ratioed on YouTube. I love the editing. Do you do your own editing or do you have an editor? Just sometimes if you're really paying attention and you and you're just not listening, you may just this is a show that, you know, you may put on and you may listen to in the background. You know, some of my videos are like that. But if you look at the editing 
<laughs> no. No. <laughs> yeah, people are not buying it. <laughs> and that's certainly going to get worse as time goes on. And after watching it, I understand why. Close your eyes. All right. I was going to ask Star Wars theories this question. I personally think that um, Mace Windu did beat him. Although I feel he embellished at the end with the oh, no, please help me. Oh, I'm helpless. Oh, oh. I don't think that the Emperor let him beat him. I and mean, he killed everybody else. You know what I mean? So I don't think he let him beat him. I think Mace really did beat him. But it was just the whole groveling and whining at the end. So let me know if you guys know. Is there a novelization or is there something that says that the Emperor actually let Mace beat him to finally turn Anakin? I think it was the whole groveling at the end that was, you know, the thing. Your eyes could deceive you. We must not trust them. Coincidentally, that's exactly what Leslie Headland said to all of Harvey Weinstein's clients before leading them into his office. Tell me what comes into your mind. <laughs> I see diversity. I see inclusion. I see equity. And lesbians in space. <laughs> That was pretty good. I like that. Although I wish it did, because apparently Lucasfilm hasn't leaned into the South Park meme enough. Put a chicken in, make her gay. Put a chicken in, make her name gay. Put a chicken in, make her gay. Put a chicken in and and make her gay. It really doesn't yet. Doesn't. It does because this is Disney Star Wars, son. What happened? Well, Perry, George Lucas's timeless story was subverted and destroyed by a bunch of ideological mm -hmm. effeminate men and women. Oh, wait, that's not you, Perry? <laughs> My bad. Anyway, apparently we've gotten it all wrong because Star Wars is not about good or bad. The best parts about Star Wars is there is no good or evil. Depends on what side you're standing on, truly. You know what I mean? Through the ages... I've seen evil take many forms. To be fair to Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant, Leslie Headland, it's like the old saying goes. I mean, right after, look the other way when it comes oh, to her. God. Write what you know. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power and who is allowed to use it. And Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant will probably know a thing or two about that. And as far as the Acolyte trailer telling you what this series is about, I have no idea. Other than bland, diverse actors in bland robes to bland music. <laughs> and another bland D-plus series from a showrunner who was asked what her favorite Star Wars was and couldn't answer the question. So when people are like, what's your, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? I'm like, there is no Star Wars movie. There is only Star Wars. Okay. And if the Acolyte trailer wasn't bad enough, the remaining Star Wars fans got another kick in the balls on the very same day. You may or may not be aware this is a battle going on over at Disney between Nelson Peltz and Bob Iger. And the weatherman Bob Iger seems to be a bit panicked about the whole thing, and he's calling in all the big guns, which includes one... Di Team Peltz! Come on, man. Bring it home, Peltz. All right, I can't take much more of this. Disappointing yet unsurprising name. Everything in your body says don't. You can't. And these are my kids. All those Star Wars films. All the Star Wars films. They were your kids. Yeah, well, they, they are. are. You know, I, and I sold them. them. I sold them to the white slavers to <laughs> take these things and. and uh, <laughs> okay, but, but I mean. But despite <laughs> all of his mumbling and grumbling on how Disney has treated his children. In the end, George Lucas sided with the white slavers. From The Hollywood <laughs> Reporter, George Lucas backs Disney and Bob Iger in proxy fight. Creating magic is not... This really does not feel right. Uh, people are saying this doesn't sound like him. That his wife is speaking for him. Or there's rumors going around that he's not in his right mind right now. And his wife is doing things for him. I don't know what the hell is going on. 
but the fan in me hopes to God that it's true. That he ate in his right mind and someone wrote that for him because there's no way you want the creator of something so great to side with the people that are destroying it. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. So, oh, some people are saying they, they got dirt on him. I, I don't know. I absolutely do not know. But whatever it is, I hope that this is not legit. And we find out soon, maybe even years later, that yeah, that he really wasn't for it. Because for amateurs yet disney has proven that you can pay people and they can still be worse than amateurs creating magic is not for amateurs when i sold lucasfilm just over a decade ago i was delighted to become a disney shareholder because of my long-term admiration for the iconic brand and bob Iger's leadership lucas said in a statement tuesday when bob recently returned to the company during a difficult time i was relieved no one knows disney better i remain a significant shareholder because i have full faith and confidence in the power of disney and Bob's track record of driving my beloved Star Wars right off a cliff. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> driving long-term value. I have voted all of my shares for Disney's 12 directors and urge other shareholders to do the same. George Lucas was never gonna side with Nelson Peltz, who was backed by Ike Hurlmutter. And it was clearly a business and a political decision. Listen, I'm not mm. gonna judge George for wanting to live out his life in peace. He's earned it, he's a legend, and the only thing he's really responsible for is selling Star Wars to Disney. And quite frankly, we all thought that was a good idea at the time. And little wow. did we know was a deal with the devil and hiring. I'm so used to seeing him now. He looks like two different people, young and older. Two different people. Kathleen Kennedy. But the rest of this lays right at the feet of Bob Iger, Kathleen Kennedy, and the rest of the insane asylum that's Lucasfilm. Disney Star Wars is a zombie franchise. It's a corpse that keeps getting defiled, mm. and every time they trot it out, it rots the entire legacy. The good news is every time Disney releases some new Disney Star Wars, there's more people coming to our side, and it's bringing the world together mm -hmm. to roast the hell out of it. Because the comment section on the Acolyte mm -hmm. trailer is glorious. After watching this, I no longer fault Anakin for what he did. <laughs> Nobody criticizes Jar Jar Binks ever again, <laughs> and I have to agree with that. I love this one. <laughs> oh my Let me tell you something. I will take Jar Jar back over all this trash we've been getting. I will take him back. Put him in every Star Wars property going forward. As long as they don't do this ish all over again and keep doing it. My God, it's so wonderful and diverse. My wife's boyfriend will love it. <laughs> I love the part when the sis said it's acolyting time, then slash through 20 young ones. I love the part where he said, so that's it, huh? We're some type of acolyte. <laughs> Close your eyes. What do you see? I see of, someone that could have alerted the world to what squad. Harvey was doing but didn't. <laughs> okay, the main question is, does anyone in this show survive after being stabbed with a lightsaber? I think that's a good question, and the answer is probably yes. Close your eyes. What do you see? I see Zendaya. And sand. Lots of sand. It's rough and coarse, and it gets everywhere. This isn't about good or evil. It's about the message and who Damn gets right. to use it. And then there's the poster with all of its subtle imagery. I mean, what's the first thing you think of when you see this, especially when it's connected to Disney and Lucasfilm? Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Disgusting. Disgusting. Admittedly, I still get a little surprised at Disney Star Wars' commitment to failure. It is absolute. And breaking news, Star Wars is dead. Still. It died in October of 2012 when George sold it to Disney, although most of us didn't know it yet. It died for me personally after I watched The Last Jedi the one and only time. And what I said back then remains true. You can't put the milk back in the titty. I knew it was over when I saw Disney treat Luke Skywalker about as well as Mark Hamill has treated his granddaughter. The good news is, while we wait for Disney to finally hit rock Wait, bottom, what? is we can all come together and point for Disney to f 
Kidding. I knew it was over when I saw Disney treat ex-girlfriend of Mark Hamill's son. Ex-girlfriend of Mark Hamill's son. Says the Star Wars actor tried to force her to get it out. Okay. Luke Skywalker about as well as Mark Hamill has treated his granddaughter. The good news is while we wait for Disney to finally hit rock bottom is we can all come together and point and laugh because everyone hates the acolyte and that's a good thing. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening to this song. I will see you in the next video. Nerdorotic.com, please subscribe. They're definitely burning it down. Definitely burning it down. Oh, God. So sad. This is so sad. Hopefully they're just pushing it out because they don't want to lose money or well, they can't do what WB did like they did with that girl or whatever. And it's just, just the last of it. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> oh, so disheartening as a fan. Post comments down below. Let me know what you think. Get over to Nerd Rodic, Subscribe. Tell them Tyler Magnus sent you. <sighs> Whoa.